shocking protest pig heads sent to mosque site in South Korea. In a shocking act of protest, severed pig heads were displayed at a mosque construction site in Daegu, South Korea. The mosque, intended to serve the growing Muslim international student population at the uh, Kyungpok National University, or KNU for short, has become the source of friction between local residents and the university's Muslim community. While the need for a larger worship space was acknowledged due to a burgeoning student population, resistance from locals resulted in a, the, a suspension order for the construction. Despite the Supreme Court overturning this decision, the controversy escalated. Islamic pamphlets were distributed through the area and rallies targeting our religion, Islam, were held, said Muaz Razak, a Pakistani PhD student who also serves the KNU's Muslim, as, excuse me, serves as KNU's Muslim community's media representative, as he stated in a media conference last April. This situation underscores the challenges South Korea faces as it grapples with evolving multicultural realities amidst a demographic crisis and its pursuit of an immigration solution. So let me get back up and give more context here. So um, I don't know if people are aware of this, but uh, South Koreans are going extinct. They have a birth replacement rate of 0 0.73, which is the lowest of any developing nation in the world. And so that means that the government desperately needs to bring in new people. And so what they've been doing is they are actually bringing in a lot of skilled immigrants, people who are, you know, university educated, highly technical, but a lot of these people are coming from places like Pakistan, Nigeria, and Uzbekistan, apparently. And so there were a lot of Muslim students, not even that much, just like by my standards, not that much, but by their standards a lot, enough that they wanted to have a mosque. And they had a house that they were worshiping at, but eventually the house didn't provide enough space for everyone to worship. So in this residential area that was close to the school, they decided to try to get a mosque built. And they got approval to build this mosque and the community did not take kindly to this. And people representing the community say that this isn't about Islam. They would have had objections to any other building being built there. However, <laughs> there are like, signs that are posted outside the mosque site that say um basically the signs youtube this is not my opinion i'm repeating something that is happening in the news there are signs that they put outside the mosque area or in the in the neighborhood that say um like basically all muslims are terrorists and that like they're saying like, oh, we don't like the smell of the cooking odors and all this stuff. And then what the community did is they started holding barbecues, rallies, parties in the alleyway next to the mosque where they were serving pork. And then someone even went to the level of in permanently installing a refrigerator that sits outside, outside of a building. And inside this refrigerator is three severed pig heads that just sits there like in immediate proximity to the mosque outside of someone's residence, just like in kind of the alleyway where this area is. And there are people trying to say that this is not an anti-Muslim thing, <laughs> which is just like, well, clearly it is. I don't know. Armin, what is your like reaction to this? Well, obviously this is disgusting behavior, xenophobic, disgusting behavior um, that should be condemned. I mean, South Korea, you need, I mean, the one way or another, your Muslim population is going to grow, right? So you, I, there's no way to, you know, fight that. So you either uh, make them welcomed in your country and the, by that they will basically, as, as part of society, they will um, adjust and adopt your values and it would be easier for them to uh, maybe accept some of your culture 
because you are being friendly with them, because you're being accepting of them, or you are going to create what you are acting like they are, right? You are by 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 treating them like this, you're going to you're going to cause radicalization. You're going to isolate them, you're going to demonize them, you're going to separate them from the rest of society, you're going to make them feel like they're not welcome here, and that is exactly the fuel for radicalization that so it's a self-fulfilling pro, uh, prophecy when you act like you know when you act like every single one of these people is a danger or not welcome or radical you're going to get more radicalization and you're going to get more of people uh with culture and behavior that you disapprove of right so it's a self-fulfilling prophecy but it's yeah. just not a way to treat people right like um especially south korea you're you're not in a position to be not accepting migrants and people from other countries um you, you're desperate so you need migration so maybe you should be more welcoming to people that are trying to make uh, south korea their home this is disgusting behavior yeah the the university size the total student population is um, almost thirty thousand people this muslim community fluctuates this this particular little um center it services only 80 to 150 people and they're saying what? that building a mosque there will like cause all this traffic in this area and the resident crowd and all this stuff and yeah i don't know go ahead i'm gonna take something back i was um i'm actually a hypocrite i'm being a hypocrite hmm. i did i said something that was really wrong, bad okay i was talking about how some people are treating muslims like as if they're a monolith treating them all like they're the same but if you pay attention to what I was saying, I said South Korea. Okay, these are I should not be acting like this. South Koreans all approve of this position. These are just the action of a few South Koreans. This does not reflect everybody in South Korea. I speak in I generalize an action of a few people as if this is a position of South Korea. That was a mistake. That was wrong. That was. That was a fallacy. That was a logical fallacy. Like so, I was like, I was condemning some South Koreans, and I com I I did the exact same thing that I was condemning. So, I'm glad that well, I just caught, caught yourself. That was very quickly. So, yeah, that good was bad. Job. That was, yeah, that was not good. No, but right. good job for catching yourself so fast. Um, yeah, thank you. Yeah. Yeah, I don't <laughs> so. know. Like Mustafa's bringing up a good point. He's saying it's a mosque for international students. That means they're not going to stay permanently. Their xenophobia makes no sense by its own rules. Well, I think the intention is for a lot of them to actually settle in in South Korea. Um, or ideally, like they need it really badly. Let me read one of the signs that was posted in the in the neighborhood. It says conscience over money, conscience before the law, conscious over religious facilities. And then it says, come on, what kind of conscience would build a religious facility in a place like this, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, this just looks like a normal neighborhood to me. I don't know. Right. And then they're saying, oh, the so one of the locals who was representing the local neighborhood and they're, why they're acting this way. She was like, media reports say that the residents are opposing Islam as a religion, but we don't really know about Islam. We are not interested. But someone knows enough to install a permanent fridge like in the immediate proximity of the mosque where they put severed pig heads like what kind of a, me a message is that supposed to send like yeah. damn near going full godfather or like you know decapitated head horse like right right yeah i don't know it's wild um, to me you know what this reminds me just so also to mention that how i think south korea overall is moving in the right direction when it comes to being accepting and I, I don't i don't know if this actually this is not a good way to come up with conclusions but i was under the impression that it seemed like it's going in the right direction based on the the small information that i had which is again it might not be accurate which is um squid games have you watched squid game squid i actually have is it that, yeah wow how could you i know um me and, and what time spoiler, yeah no but spoiler alert there is a pakistani person in the tv series right um ali there who is pakistani who's muslim and has a hijabi wife there 
and there are people within the show that are mean to him um as an immigrant like you know like t- talking to him as if he's lower you know being you know being xenophobic basically being xenophobic to ali right in the show um and the show portrays ali as a good person uh you know and his, him and his wife his hijabi wife as a good person as somebody that has some principles is moral and shows the people in the show who are being xenophobic to him as bad as bad people right and i think and i felt like this is addressing first of all it showed to me that in in south korea is dealing with xenophobia against like muslim immigrants like you know, it must be there for this show to be highlighting it like that. And it also it shows that this, this show is such a popular show is condemning that. So I know there's a pushback. Again. So basically, based on the very limited information, I could see the struggle that exists within South Korea, that there are xenophobic people and also the more progressive part of South Korea that sees that as disgusting and is pushing against that. And for that to be in the show and this show being that popular, to me, that suggests that... Um, you know, like that that side is winning. Again, this is not a very good way of com- coming up a conclusion. But again, that's the most popular show, um, South Korean show ever, right? Um, so I, again, as I, I, me and I think Susanna, we are against hijab and stuff like that. But again, that doesn't mean that I, I as much as I'm against hijab and what it stands for, I do like to see more representation on media like that, just so that it becomes normalized. Because we were, we are against what certain ideas are about and stand for. But again, we don't want people to use that as an excuse to demonize and ostracize people. So uh, exactly. as long as they exist, like, so it's it's good for us to move into uh, move into in the direction of a world where modesty culture is not a thing. So therefore, hijab is not a thing. But while hijabi people are part of reality, part of our society, we do want them, people seeing them, to be normalized enough for them not to be demonized, right? Oh my so God, these are not contradict. Yeah. So these are not contradictory thing. I want to see more hijabis in media. So the fact. In, especially in countries where they're minor, they're minority, so their existence is normalized. And at the same time, I'm against hijab because hijab is mod- modesty culture. These are not contradictory position positions. As long as the hijab isn't being promoted. Yes, exactly. Yeah, as as yeah, as like yeah, as, I I want to I want to see more hijabis in media because I want them to be normalized, but I don't want the concept of hijab to be promoted because that's modesty culture, and I'm against modesty culture. Mm-hmm. And what this is interesting, in a country of roughly 52 million people, there are only between 150 to 200,000 Muslims in South Korea. Only about 35,000 of them are actually ethnically Korean. Wow. But we do have well, ethnically gonna see Korean a... Muslims out here. It just yeah. like this whole attitude, Armin, can I be honest? When I was researching this news, this pissed me off so much that I literally started to look up if there were masjids in my area having events. Because I'm like, screw what? this whole attitude. Screw this whole attitude. I hate it so much. Like, yes, I have disagreements on like beliefs or maybe there's some values that we don't necessarily share. But like, we're all just people. Like, and I would hate to think that there are people in my community that maybe feel ostracized like that. So what, Mm -hmm. I should show up and just like be a normal person and just show up and like, be like, hey guys, let's be friends. Like I live with a Muslim right now. Like, I don't give a fuck. Like it's this, this mentality is so outside of how I live my life that it's hard for me to comprehend. Right. I don't understand it. Go ahead. Can I share with you an experience? I've already told you, but I think I need to say it one more time here. Okay. So in Vancouver, this, this story broke my heart in Vancouver. There was a, I saw an ad for an open mosque day uh, where, where we were invited, people were invited to go learn about Islam. Right. Uh Uh-huh. And, you know, I, I think, like, you shouldn't talk to Muslims just randomly about Islam unless you're openly invited to, right? Uh-huh. So I was like, oh, this is great. They are inviting people to go talk about Islam, right? Mm-hmm. So I went, it was a mosque in downtown Vancouver. 
And I just went there just to talk to Muslims and see what they have to say about Islam. And I was there and they had food and people were talking about to a whole bunch of non-Muslims about Islam and they were friendly and stuff until some people recognized me and they know my anti-Islamic stance and activism. And there was a point where the, I don't know if there was a head of the mosque or the main manager there or whatever, but he's an elderly guy. He said, like, he took me to a corner. He said that he wanted to talk to me. Do you know the story? Have I told you the story? No. No? Oh, okay. So he took me to a corner and he said, to, he said this to me. He said, like, I just want to tell you that the people here that come to this mosque are good people. They don't deserve to be shot. They don't deserve to be killed. Like, not all Muslims are bad people. Like, the guy was genuinely scared. He thought, like, he was like, and I was like, of course. And you're like, I just want you to know that these people are good people with families that, you know, that care for them, that depend on them. And if oh they God, die, they like, want to cry. I, and I was like, this person thinks like I'm a threat to them. And I was like, I was like switching between anger and sorry. Okay, because I was at, at, I, I didn't say that I was angry because I was angry because he thought I was a, just because I have an anti Islamic stance. He thinks that I am a person that could potentially do something like that. I was shocked. But at the same time, I didn't say that I was angry because I was feeling so sad for That's the guy that he lives that he lives in such stress. Like this guy has heard like other Musk being shot. And he is terrified about the idea that this could happen to them. Like he comes to the mosque looking at all these people that he loves and he thinks that with the fear that one day this could happen to them. So I didn't dis I didn't express any of my anger because I was more concerned about this ma this poor man. His emotional well-being. God damn. Yeah, that he has to deal with this level of stress every time he goes comes to his mosque. But I was I was also offended to fit for him to think that I had I, I I could potentially do something like that. Still, yeah, man, that's oh my god, that's rough. Yeah, but yeah, and like that's the exact kind of attitudes that we want to fight, right? Like I don't want people in my community to live to with that. That's heartbreaking. Exactly. Yeah, Suha All right. saying. Holy shit, did he really say that? Poor thing. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um wait, what is Dark Cop said about? What are you done reading about? I think there's just some I... nonsense going on in the live chat. Guys, be nice to each other, please. Don't fight with each other. We don't want to deal with the drama in the live chat as well. Anyways, GJ just gave us a super chat. Thank you so much, GJ. By GJ is saying, Armin, don't be so hard on yourself and your so-called hypocrisy how many hours a week are you streaming and what is this slaving, slaving. and grinding for for atheist republic good cause well i mean it's good to be hard on yourself when it comes to making mistakes and i wasn't too hard i was like oh i made a mistake and i caught i was i was actually proud of myself for catching it so i'm not that hard on myself so yeah but thank you for thank you for um thank you for the messages of support i appreciate that right now we're looking for video editors video editors would be working with me graphic designers i think graphic designers would be working with suzy um uh, grant research and writing assistant they would be working with suzy team coordinator or volunteer applicant ma application managers they would be working with me english to persian translators they would be working with me voiceover narrators would be working with me high profile guests uh, finder and coordinator that would they would be working with me that position live event speaking opportunity hunter that would be working with Susanna uh, news cur curator and writer that would be working with Susanna art team manager and payment coordinator that's a position that would be working with Susanna financial coordinator and bookkeeper that's a position that would be working with Susanna uh, social media manager that's a position that would be working with me a Drupal web developer, that's another position that we're working with Susanna. And lastly, live stream co-host in the background, most likely, unless somebody is really good. Um, 
you know, that would be for maybe secular jihadist recording videos, or if they speak Persian for maybe for Persian, uh, the show that would be working with me again, the link to the application for volunteers is in the description and also in the live stream. Um, so if you want to join our team as a volunteer, please consider doing so.